I'd like to tell you a story. A story about an incredible woman. Her name is Dr. Annie Yoffa. Dr. Annie Yoffa was a world traveller, surgeon, psychiatrist, philosopher, published writer and student of Freud. She was also the first woman to hike the Warburton to Walhalla Trail across the Victorian Borbor Ranges unaccompanied in 1929. Her experiences during the hike were so transformational that she published a book about it. The Real Thing, An Adventure in the Australian Bush, is a beautifully written and wondrous tale of adventure and sometimes misadventure. Annie's description of Victoria's Yarra Ranges, Borbor Ranges and Gippsland Ranges are breathtaking. She writes in a way that allows the reader to visualise canopies of majestic mountain ash, the morning mist flowing like a river on the horizon and even the weathered faces of the myriad characters she meets along the way. Annie's astonishment of the beauty and scale of this region of Australia is delightfully displayed in her writing. She describes the famous mushroom rocks as the perfect imitation of the vegetable by a mineral. She had visited some of the most famous temples, mosques and cathedrals around the world, from St Peter's to Notre Dame, but she had never seen such surpassing grandeur as the twilight temple of the Australian bush. During the late 1800s and early 1900s, the Warburton to Walhalla Trail was a big thing. It was a popular rite of passage for small groups of mostly men. They would traverse the Australian bush, sleeping in huts along the way, braving the unpredictable elements and conquering Mount Borbor. The story of Annie's solo journey paints a picture of an era in Victorian history that is long gone. Long gone too is a lot of the original trail, it now lies blanketed by the waters of the Upper Yarra Reservoir. Annie was a unique trailblazer. She devoted her life to the study of science. She bought land in the Dandenong Ranges solely for the purpose of exploring the connection between life, nature and the universe. It was here that Annie was brutally murdered in 1959 by Victor Jones, a man she didn't know. After her death, Annie's brother told the media that she had planned to give up her self-imposed solitary life and to publish her findings in her study of psychodynamics. We will never read these discoveries. Instead, a quick web search will produce a collection of newspaper articles surrounding her untimely and shocking death. Reassuringly, the search also uncovers her book, which can easily be reserved to read at the State Library of Victoria. It is this story, or rather, this marvellous work of literature, that defines how we remember her.